Welcome back to Subpixel Spotlight. Once again, I am your host, Jake Terrio, and today's video is something of a companion piece to a longer video that will be coming this summer. But I wanted to talk about how to write a compelling and satisfying antagonist by comparing and contrasting the final two challengers of two LEGO racing games. Rocket Racer from 1999's LEGO Racers and Shadow Z from 2023's LEGO 2K Drive. My name's Jeff. To begin, let's talk about the narrative similarities of these two games. Both titles follow you, the player, as you climb up the ranks of each game's associated racing league to eventually challenge the top dog, Rocket Racer, or Shadow Z. In LEGO Racers, you're first introduced to Rocket Racer in the opening cutscene, where you see him competing against all the other key challengers you'll have to defeat on your way to claim his title. In the series of races shown in this cutscene, you see Rocket cleverly outracing his opponents, even making up lost time after a long pit stop to eventually win the final race. But then that's the last time we see Rocket until the final showdown, when he appears like this. Now compare LEGO 2K Drive. Today's top story. You driving fast. At the start of the game, you're already a racer, but now it's time to get the Sky Trophy, which you can win by competing in the Sky Cup Grand Prix. But to do that, you'll need to beat a bunch of crazy racers and the undefeated. Never been caught cheating, but probably cheats all the time. Reigning champion and obvious bad guy. Shadow Z. That's me. So here's then why I wanted to make this video. I think this bit of characterization right here makes Shadow Z a bad antagonist. And bear in mind, I know I'm not the target audience for this game, I'm not a child. But even so, let me explain why I think that Rocket Racer represents a more compelling antagonist, regardless of player age, and a more satisfying antagonist to defeat than Shadow Z. There's a big difference between a character being an antagonist and a character being a, quote, bad guy. They are not the same thing, even if some characters are both. Rocket Racer is never shown to be anything except an exceptional racer. He's never rude to you, apart from some friendly trash talk, and there's no hint of impropriety to his racing tactics. He's just a guy and he is really good at racing. Even when you defeat him, he's super jazzed about it and gives you his car as a final reward. He's happy you finally beat him because now he has a new goal to chase. He is an expert at his craft, and like anyone in his position, even he wants to be better. Conversely, Shadow Z is rude to you for no reason. And we're told outright that his success in racing comes not from any special skill, but because he definitely cheats. A point reinforced by many other cutscenes throughout the game. I knew this rookie was going to be trouble. Yeah, probably cheating and not getting caught. Just like us. Exactly. So right from the outset, your defeat of Shadow Z is not so much a challenge to overcome, but an inevitability at which you'll eventually arrive. He's not a good racer. He's a cheater. So of course by the time you've honed your skills enough to reach the Sky Cup Grand Prix, you'll be ten times the racer he is, and you'll finally put him in his place. But because we know this, defeating him will be unsatisfying, because we know he could never have legitimately beat us in the first place. Rocket Racer, on the other hand, is a powerhouse. He is every bit the racer people say he is, and he demands your respect on the track. When you beat him, it is euphoric, because you know it was through your cold, hard skill behind the wheel. Shadow Z's defeat is, however, as I said, an inevitability. There is no other possible outcome, unless he were to cheat, which we might expect, but then we would know his victory is illegitimate. Losing to Rocket Racer is frustrating, but it feels fair. We have to get better. Losing to Shadow Z feels unfair, because we can assume or excuse our loss as the result of cheating. And isn't it then more satisfying to defeat an exceptionally skilled opponent who competes fairly than a theoretically skilled opponent who doesn't? 
If you don't agree with me, leave a comment down below, and be on the lookout for our extended one-year anniversary review of LEGO 2K Drive coming this May. As always, I'm Jake Terrio, and you've been watching Subpixel Spotlight.